W4000 is a third generation high thrust turbofan engine designed for low fuel consumption, high reliability, and easy maintenance. The PW4000 has a state of the art design, the result of more than 10 years of research and hundreds of tests. whatever you want to do or could do to a jet engine, we do here in Experimental. We put the engines through hell. We abuse them, we use them, and we, uh, we give them a hell of a life. I've seen many engines uh, operate under conditions that a pilot would never see, at least hope he'll never see, to make sure that the engine will operate. This program is part of an ongoing effort by Pratt & Whitney's Flight Operations Support Group to help flight crews operate their engines safely and efficiently. It's our uh, mission to give the flight crew a, an understanding of the engine uh, through the, the eyes of a pilot and the understanding from a pilot's standpoint uh, relating how the engine operates to what the pilot will see uh, from his instruments in the flight deck. Point one, Aper. All right, Aper. Aper's engaged. With uh, the new generation of engines like the PW4000, the most frequently asked questions are with the, the EEC, or the FADEC, as we, we call it sometimes. Uh, it's the most complex part of the engine. It's the heart of the engine in terms of control, and, and it has an influence over virtually all the engine components. So uh, it, it bears a lot of uh, understanding. Auto throttle throttle. The PW4000 EEC is a full authority control. 100 feet. Therefore, it has no means to be shut off during engine operation. 40. All flight crew control inputs to an engine are made and via its FADEC, two, which in turn regulates the systems on the engine. All information that the flight crew sees coming from each engine comes by way of its FADEC. We're here looking at a PW4000 engine, which is used for maintenance training. And as such, the engine is uncovered and allows us to look at the various components of the engine, which are directly involved with the engine's operation. First, we'll look at the FADEC, which is on the upper right-hand fan case. The FADEC directly controls the thrust of the engine and is used in, to control various components throughout the engine. It's continually monitoring and sending signals to these components through these wire bundles. It's constantly monitoring all the engine systems, uh, including its own uh, health. If there's a problem detected within an engine system or even within the, uh, in the FADEC, it can send a message, it will send a message to the flight crew if the flight crew uh, has reason to take some action for that, that uh, discrepancy. There's a, a hierarchy of, of message levels. The, uh, the most basic message would just be a, a maintenance message, in which case the uh, flight crew would not see the message being recorded, but because they have no uh, action required, but once the airplane gets on the ground, the maintenance crew will read that message and take whatever action is appropriate. Redundancy in design of the FADEC includes its own power supply and two virtually identical computers. We had a schematic of the FADEC showing the 
two computers, channels A and B. They're linked together, and they have separate input signals allowing them to independently operate the engine. As a matter of fact, after each start, the FADEX selects a different channel to operate the engine. In other words, if it's in A channel, it'll switch to the B channel, and on the next start, it'll switch back to the A channel. So it, it's constantly using, uh, alternating and using both channels to determine uh, the, the health of each, of each uh, channel in the FADEX. If a channel is operating in the normal mode, and for some reason, such as a loss of a signal or another failure, can no longer operate in the normal mode, the, the FADEC will switch to the other channel and continue operation in the normal mode. Within each channel, uh, once the channel is selected, each channel has the capability to control the engine using uh, two different engine parameters. The normal mode is to use engine pressure ratio, EPR, as the controlling parameter for the, for the FADEC. Now, if for some reason EPR is not available or that the FADEC just cannot control the engine using EPR, it has the capability to automatically shift into the alternate mode. And in the alternate mode, it uses N1 speed as its controlling parameter. In addition, there is communication between the channels. For example, if the channel is operating in the normal mode and loses some bit of information necessary for operation, it will attempt to obtain that information from the other channel to continue operating in the normal mode. These are examples of the redundancy that's built into the FADEC to maintain engine operation. Start, thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and start uh, left engine first. Left engine. For normal engine start, the uh, first thing is we recommend that you, you alternate the use of emission systems one and two. What this does is it, it uh, verifies the health of both ignition systems and it will identify if one of the systems is not operating. Ignition systems one and two consist of two separate exciter boxes and two separate igniters. Selection is made in the cockpit. We also recommend during uh, motoring the engine for engine start that you motor the engine up to the maximum motoring and two speed. This is typically 25 to 28%. The reason for recommending this is that, especially if the engine has been shut down uh, soon before, the uh, engine is, is very hot and retains a lot of heat. Motoring the engine up to its maximum motoring speed cools the, especially the high pressure com compressor in the engine, and it improves the chances of a successful start. If the maximum motoring speed is less than 15% N2, we do not recommend a start be attempted. During motoring, if there is no oil pressure indication, the start should be aborted. After the fuel control switch is in the run position, there are several conditions which would also require a start be aborted. and start the left engine. Left engine. One would be no indication of an EGT rise within 20 seconds. Another would be no indication of N1 speed by the time N2 reaches 40%. A third reason to abort a start would be the indication of a hung or impending hot start which would be characterized by the EGT rising rapidly and the rotor speeds either stabilizing below the normal idle levels or decreasing. Before to start, the fuel control switch is 
placed in the cutoff position. If the starter has already been disengaged, it may be re-engaged when the engine spools down to the maximum speed for re-engaging the starter. The maximum speed for re-engaging the starter is 20% N2. Once you reach the 20% N2 level, you can re-engage the starter and motor the engine for 30 seconds. What this does is clear all the fuel vapors out of the combustion chamber. If conditions permit, starter re-engagement below 15% N2 speed is recommended to prolong the life of the starter. If a PW4000 has been shut down for more than two hours, it should be warmed up at idle or taxi thrust for at least five minutes before takeoff power is set. This is a guideline, by the way, and it's not a, a, a hard limit. In other words, uh, the takeoff should not be delayed if the five minutes uh, guideline is not, is not followed. The reason for warming the engine up is to allow the internal engine components to all reach a stabilized operating temperature. The uh, other reason for warming the engine up is to ensure that the proper oil temperature is maintained. The minimum oil temperature permitted for takeoff if, is 50 degrees. The reason that we require this minimum oil temperature is that in the engine there's a fuel oil cooler. It's a heat exchanger which transfers the heat of the oil to the fuel. It prevents the fuel from forming any ice icing if there happens to be water in the fuel. This is the fuel oil cooler and in here is the air oil heat exchanger. The FADEC controls flow through the fuel oil cooler and air oil heat exchanger to maintain acceptable fuel and oil temperatures. I'm going to go ahead and run these engines up one at a time to 45 percent. Okay. And one. During icing conditions, in addition to the use of uh, engine anti-ice, we recommend that the engines be run up to 45 percent and one speed about every 10 minutes. Uh, this is to help shed ice that may build up on the fan blades. Now this should be done one engine at a time and there's no, no need to maintain the 45% N1 when it's, when it's reached. You can just move one thrust lever up to 45% N1, bring it back, and then the other one up to 45 and bring it back. Delta 767 heavy, 070 at the marker, clear for takeoff. A final note on warm-ups. Many airlines conserve fuel by delaying the startup of one engine until shortly before takeoff. Pratt & Whitney recommends that flight crews anticipate takeoff clearance by at least five minutes, so the engine can be given adequate time to warm up. We feel that, that uh, derated takeoff thrust is one of the most important things that a flight crew can do to improve the life, the operating life of the engine on the wing because it substantially reduces the temperatures inside the engine and in, especially inside the turbine and it stands to reason that the lower the operating temperatures that the turbine parts are exposed to that the longer that they're going to last. Lights as you like them? We recommend that whenever possible a rolling takeoff procedure be used and this is done for, for two, two main reasons. The, uh, the rolling takeoff will reduce the possibility of an engine surge if the takeoff is made under crosswind conditions and it also has the uh, effect of reducing the possibility of 
the engines ingesting any foreign objects uh, that may be on the runway. When setting takeoff thrust, we recommend that initially the thrust levers be moved up to about 1.1 EPR and check and see and ensure that both engines are accelerating together normally. Then, if you choose to use the auto throttle, it may be engaged and takeoff thrust set. And takeoff thrust should be set by 80 knots. Deeper. Deeper's engaged. FADEC sets takeoff EPR by electronically controlling the fuel metering unit. The fuel metering unit adjusts fuel flow to give the proper thrust. The fuel pump and fuel filter provide fuel to the fuel metering unit, which sends the fuel to the fuel distribution valve, which distributes the fuel through the various manifolds to the fuel injectors and into the burner. The turbine case cooling system is used to maximize the efficiency of the engine and also to cool turbine cases. Fan air is brought in through this manifold and distributed to these tubes which wrap around the turbines and impinge the air on the turbines. The fan air is controlled by these valves which are adjusted by the FADEC depending on the engine's thrust level and the conditions of flight.